Some time ago, you may have attended or watched a video recording of a lecture where I discussed the concept of information efficiency. And if you paid attention, you may remember about an edge case that we discussed that gave us some sort of a paradoxical result that produced an interface that had an efficiency above 100%. This is, of course, not possible. Therefore, there has to be another explanation. Where exactly did we go wrong? Having thought about this problem, I think I found a solution and I will discuss it now in this screencast. Before I do, I say that I I assume that you have already watched the lecture itself, so you know the context. The specific model we had a, an issue with worked as follows. So you have a watch that has hours and minutes. To keep things simple, we don't take into account AM, PM, neither do we take into account seconds. The watch has two buttons, let's call it the H button and M, the minute button. When I want to set the hour, I press the H button once, then the clock will automatically increment the hour. And when this number here reaches the value I want, I press H again and the hour is set. The same happens with minutes. Now the trouble is that given that we have two buttons, the H button and the M button, so for a total of two buttons, it means that the value, the informational value of each button is one bit. So whenever I press H, I transmit one bit. Whenever I press M, I transmit one bit. So the paradox was as follows. To set the hour, we have to press H once, wait for a while, then press H one more time to stop incrementing the time value. So this is one bit plus one bit. This is two bits to set the hour. Then we do the same for minutes. We press once, then this number here begins to increment automatically. We wait for as long as we want, and then we press M again to stop. And this is another two bits. The sum of this is four, and it turns out we have an efficiency above 100% because if you remember the total amount of info is 9.5 bits divided by 4 and multiplied by 100 gives us something which is bigger than 100. It doesn't make sense. So where is the culprit? Having thought about it, I reached the following conclusion. The trouble is that we fell into the trap of counting just the clicks or the button presses, whereas in fact in this specific case, the passage of time is also a way to transmit information. For example, let's say that I agree with you to follow, the, follow these rules. If I tap or if I snap my fingers every second, it means I'm sending you the letter A. And if I'm tapping my fingers, I mean, if I'm snapping my fingers every five seconds, then the message I send is B. So in practical terms, listen to this. This is A because the frequency of clicks was one. And in this case, you got the idea. In this case, it's B because the time between snaps is longer. So this leads us to the conclusion that if you wait for this long, it means 
one thing and if you wait for this long it means something else in other words the passage of time itself is a way to transmit information let's suppose that whenever you press the H button the digit here is incremented every second so if I wait for one two three four five seconds it means one thing but if I wait for one two three four five six seconds then it means something else now let us delve into a, a more specific scenario for hours we have 12 possible values from 1 to 12 you can represent it graphically as follows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay this the last one was unnecessary okay just imagine this part isn't there now if you wait this much you mean that you wanted to transmit the number two if you wait this much it is four and so on this brings us to the next point which is that every second you wait plays a role so if you wait for one second it means one if you wait for five seconds it means five and as you remember on average because there are 12 possible values on average you might uh, you will need to make only six changes in the auto incremented hour indicator so you will have to wait for six seconds which is the average time you have to wait now given that there are 12 possible values it means that for every second you wait you transmit that many bits now I don't know what the exact value is but let's suppose that 2 at the third power is 8 and 2 at the fourth power is already 16 so let's just roughly say that we transmit that uh, every second you wait is worth 3.5 bits it's a rough number you can of course use a calculator to get the exact figure so if you wait for six seconds it means that you transmit six multiplied by 3.5 bits now you can do the same for minutes here there are 60 minutes and again I don't know the exact figures but if 2 at the 5th power is 32 and 2 at the 6th power is 64 it has to be something between them so let's just roughly say it's 5.5 bits in other words every second you wait while this part is incremented automatically you are transmitting 5.5 bits so on average you will have to wait for 30 seconds because there are 60 minutes in total you will on average have to make 30 adjustments to get either to one minute or another so it's 30 multiplied by 5.5 bits so now we
we can redo our computations and get a proper figure. So you press H once. You wait for six seconds. This is a period throughout which you transmit that many bits. So six multiplied by three and a half would be, let's just say 20, roughly speaking. So 20 bits, then you press H again. And remember that every H is worth one bit. So that's 22 bits. Now we do the same for minutes. So you press M once, then you wait for 30 seconds, which would be a rough equivalent of 30 multiplied by five and a half, which is 150, let's say 175. Then you press M again, so that's 177, 177 bits. Now, if we compute the sum of that, it will be 199, so let's just say 200 bits. So that's the input. And let's go back to the efficiency formula. You take your output, you divide it by the input, you multiply it by 100%. So our output is 9.5 bits. You divide that by 200 and you multiply by 100. So we get rid of this. Let's just say it's 10 divided by 200, which is one divided by 20, which is 1 20th. And you multiply that by 100. So that's 100 divided by 20. And that's 50% efficiency, if my math is right. And it could be wrong. Let's see if I can pan the screen. No, I can't. All right. So the primary trap was in the fact that we only computed the clicks or the button presses, but we failed to quantify time. And in this case, I think it's a good idea to make an analogy with energy. It never vanishes. It just transforms into something else. The same applies to information. It didn't go anywhere. It simply transformed in time. In other words, the amount of time we waited actually transmitted a certain amount of information. And this was the part of the calculus that we simply discarded, which is why we got that uh, very surprising result of an efficiency above 100%. Now that you know what the trap was, you can keep it in mind in the future and remember that time is also a way to transmit information and there is a way to quantify it. So I hope this clarifies the mystery that has surfaced at that lecture. And if you still have any questions, let me know.